Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, we are going to try and take care of some of the contracts that we have here. Position a satellite in a specific orbit of Earth, position a satellite in a specific orbit of Earth, uh, science data from space around Earth, and the lunar flyby uncrewed. And we have some other things that we could do. Lunar impactor sounds interesting, uh, thankfully uncrewed. <laughs> Uh, lunar orbit is a little bit further away. I'm a little bit worried about the position satellite in a specific orbit of Pluto. Those are not contracts I was expecting. Uh, I was also not expecting this one around the Sun. Science data from space around the Moon should be doable. So let me pick that up. And we've already done one of those before, but we'll do a new one probably. Okay. And so these are the things that we're doing. Position a satellite in a stationary orbit of Mars. Well, they give a lot of funds for that, gotta say. It has to keep in line of sight with sector... So it's gonna have to be in a stationary orbit. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, so that's another interesting thing, but that's a little bit down the road. Let's take a look at the rockets that we have cooking. Right now, all we have is the ComTub-1 on the Swift-2. And so let me take a look at the VAB and see what else we need to be building. That's not a lunar flyby satellite. Uh, and really the next contract that we need to worry about, all of the contracts seem to be up about the same time except for the science data from space around the moon. But uh, we need something cooking that can take care of this contract. So let me go to the VAB and see if we need to change anything. It's been a little bit of time since I posted one of these videos and it's been a little bit of time since I've actually been in this save. So I have to remember what I'm doing, uh, and that has been because of personal issues, uh, not because of lack of interest. Ah yes, the Swift 1C was our lunar surveyor, and uh, we could put some extra instruments on here. So yeah, uh, I'll have to try and remember to do the whole whole control thing a little bit more carefully this time. I overdid it last time. Hmm, maybe these are even overpowered for this. I'll have to see. They're either on or off, after all. I wonder if uh, fine controls would work. Yeah, so last time I overshot, I remember. And I'll have to be more careful about it this time. Okay. Uh, maybe more solar panels? I don't think solar panels was our problem. My problem was overshooting. Well, it's 6,000. Uh, maybe I should put some more instruments. Yeah, I want it. Orbital perturbation experiment. Just one. Does have a delta V impact. Hmm. We don't have anything to balance out the other side. Well, I guess we could, uh... The Geiger Mueller tube, I think, is already built in as well. Well, there's a Geiger counter for radiation data. This Geiger Mueller tube also gets radiation data so I don't know what the benefit is of it over the Geiger counter yeah I, I it says this one contains a Geiger Mueller tube as well so we don't need one alright well I guess I'll have to ditch this alright let's let's try this again it was close it's not too expensive either now obviously we could build much more advanced rockets with the engines that we've got. But uh, well there's no 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 point to it just yet. Got R7 booster engine and core engine. Could build us uh, an R7 style rocket. But yeah, uh, actually that's very interesting. They don't have the verniers though. The R7 used verniers, not uh, not so much the gimbling. Oh well. Anyway, so uh, we'll start off with this. I think I'll also build an extra ComTub one. We'll we'll modify it in the, uh, after the fact uh, if it turns out that the first ComTub one doesn't work out. But we might as well uh, get it lined up and building anyway. Okay, uh, we're launching ComTub one, and we're gonna try for the lower of the two orbits that we're supposed to get into which means we need an inclination of 148.6 degrees I'll try and calculate what the launch azimuth for that is launch of ascending node is 213.9 degrees so we need to line up with that okay so uh, quite some requirements here but uh, yeah let's launch 
Okay, so here we are. I calculated the launch azimuth. It looks like uh, 283.78 will work out for our launch angle. Uh, it wants the longitude of ascending node at 213.9 degrees, so uh, let's start off just short of that. So I'm going to time warp here and hope everything stays alright. Okay. Oh shoot, pass it. Okay, uh, well let's try it from here. We'll have to correct a little bit. So our target heading is going to be 283 point, well I'll just say 284 to round it off. Okay, right. Throttle up and uh, SAS on for now. Alright, everything seems to be on it. Barometer is good. Yeah, all we need to do is get to the right orbit, which is going to be a little bit tricky. Here we go. Oops. Sorry about that. A little bit of a antivirus warning for other reasons. Hope my calculation is right. might be the other side. Instead of 284, make it uh, two, uh, 256 might be a thing. Uh, our longitude of ascending nose going up tr dramatically. This is not good. Aren't they supposed to show us the target orbit? Um, we seem to be way off of the target orbit. It is not right at all. Crud. I should have checked that. Okay, we're launching a communication satellite and testing this rocket. Jeez. Well, that's the last time I trust that little indicator, but maybe I shouldn't have used this this based on I don't know what target. Okay, set. We're going pro uh, rather steeply here. Okay, switching to SAS temporarily. Okay, Vanguard is lit. Very good, we continue. In completely the wrong direction. <laughs> uh. Is it at least the right inclination? It looks like it would have been compatible with that direction. Sort of. Okay, and ten eye out. Going a little bit high. Well, I mean, actually, for this satellite, since we're not going to be in that orbit, I'd actually like it a little bit high. It'll do a lot more good that way. Our target inclination. What's our target inclination? No, that's not the right one. One forty-eight point six. So we're not too far off. We're getting there. Yeah. So this was the right launch azimuth, at least. Not the right longitude of ascending node, unfortunately. Okay, switching back to SES. Okay, set. Ignition. Okay. Alright, looks good. Let's see if we can get the inclination correct, anyway. If not anything else. So I'm gonna put this into a higher orbit than uh, the contract in the case, because we've already botched the contract anyway. Uh, so, yeah. I'll just let the stage run out, and then I'll use the fuel in the satellite itself to round it out after that. 
Having a satellite in a retrograde orbit isn't the most useful thing for me, I don't think, but... Well, one more communication asset is still one more communication asset. Oh, it doesn't, actually, we won't make orbits on this stage alone. I cancel that. That's, uh, that's not correct. We'll have to use some of the payload's own fuel to get to orbit. So let's get some pitch up here. The payload should have control, that's something I'm going to be testing here. So, uh, RCS and then SEP. Okay, very good. We will still be able to do a contract, by the way. We've got science up here, and we've got a contract for science in space around Earth here. So this is not going to go to no use at all or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to cut there. 304 by 292, probably the best orbit I've gotten into in this series. And uh, let's go... Let's see what way would be best. Um, maybe north south would be good. Here, I'm just gonna take Smart ASS off the job and do it myself. Do we have enough electric charge? Not quite. It doesn't look like it. It's good enough for. Yeah, it's just not quite enough. Maybe if I uh, stop one of the antennae. And we do need to maintain roll orientation if we're gonna get anything at all going. Maybe I should unlock the other RCS ports to get proper roll. It's a little bit cumbersome with this sort of thing. These ports aren't I mean they're they're good for roll in certain directions, but not other directions. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, let's get that contract done. Record perturbation data. Transmit. And it looks like it's surface biome dependent, so we got it over grasslands. We can do other biomes later. I'll save the other things for other contract opportunities. SAS doesn't seem to be very good at holding anything right now. The probe seems to like to spin around and around. Obviously, time warp should not stop that, and I'm not going to attempt to use it, even though it seems like occasionally persistent rotation doesn't kill it properly. But we clearly need more solar panelry. Now we do have technology that we've got researching that will give us better solar panels, so that's positive. But we probably need much better solar panels and much better RCS ports to hold our role situation. Right now we can't recharge. Our drain is 0.07 even with the other antenna retracted. Okay, I'm gonna leave this up here. I'm not gonna try and adjust it anymore. And let's go back to the Space Center. So I think I should try editing this com tub and fix that up. Okay, well I'm not particularly proud of this solution. I have of course uh, tweak scaled the solar panels up to 200%. It's it's all calculated properly though. Uh, if you take a look at the probe itself, it's only 1,380. So actually, each pair of solar panels costs a bundle. Uh, I think it's 1,200 or so each panel, which is appropriate since the small panels cost uh, 300. And the mass also is increased uh, to the third so in other words this is double the size so it's eight times the mass so all that is correct and uh, I just wanted to make sure that was verified as far as whether it's acceptable to use this given our level of technology I don't know I guess I would wait for a ruling from the RP0 RP0 technically is trying to work on tweak scale compatibility that is listed 
on the forum page. But I don't know if this is kosher or not. The other option was, of course, to use these structural panels uh, in order to put the solar panels on. And then we'd have a lot more parts all together. Uh, I guess we'd have a structural panel with uh, however many we need. But I think this is a more elegant solution anyway. It's not the, I mean, it's not the greatest satellite I've ever created. We'll have to wait until better parts for that. If you're wondering about robotic parts, I do have Inferno Robotics in here, but I don't know if it's integrated into the tech tree at all. So, um, yeah, eventually we may get ro robotic parts, but we sure don't have them right now. Uh, I unlocked the RCS ports here, this RCS quad um, 69 to 111 Newton class. It's a lot heavier than uh, these attitude jets, so I just uh, have uh, a, a single set of four instead of two sets of four. I mean, that should be uh, more than enough anyway, but it's still heavier. It is uh, configured to hydrazine, though interestingly enough, it's uh, it doesn't have tech level two. I can only uh, boost it to tech level one here. So yeah, uh, so we might not have as much efficiency as we got out of those guys there. Maybe, maybe not. So, yep, otherwise the probe is basically the same thing as we had before, but we are generating a lot more uh, more power, and hopefully that'll save us this time. Again, we, can, we have to cut this in half, so we'll only be generating 0.1 on each side, and maybe that'll give us the margin we need. And now that we've got the proper RCS quads, we'll have proper roll control to make sure that the panels are facing the sun properly. Anyway, that's my hope. Uh, it does cut into our delta V on this probe. Let me increase the utilization to the point where the avionics can take it. Well, that's where it is. So that's as much as you can do. And I don't know. I don't know if that's enough. For the first mission, for the low altitude one, it's probably okay. For the high altitude one, I'm not so sure because we're going to have to get to the the apoapsis and then boost our periapsis up. It wants a circular orbit. And I don't think that's enough to actually get us there. So we'll have to create a larger probe, probably with two of these cores and uh, just larger in general. But we'll continue trying for the low orbit one first. So I, I sized the panels so that they would just barely fit in the fairing. I hope that's that, that does look okay. And the fairing's a little bit large, but okay. I guess we'll go with that. So again, it's not the ideal solution. But I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna call this ComTub2. And that's just for saving. Because uh, we have to save edits and it'll probably still be called ComTub1 there. Okay, well it's going to take a while to build. It costs a lot more because of the enlarged solar panels. And of course it's a little bit heavier than before. But we weren't exactly sure of fuel last time, so maybe it'll be alright. Okay, well before we try ComTub2, we will be trying the Swift 1C again. Trying to get it over to the moon on a lunar flyby. And let's launch. Now we could make some substantial improvements to uh, to the Swift 1C as well. I mean, we could probably send a better probe over to the moon, but we'll try this for now. And if it doesn't work again, I'll make uh, big changes that will uh, hopefully see it succeed on the next try. But let's see if this version works. And in order to do that, let me actually target the moon this, moon this time. Okay, and we have to time warp until, well we don't have to time warp until relative inclination is uh, is close to zero, but it'd be a good idea. Uh oh. It's on physical time warp. I don't want that. Um, I hate when that happens. Come on, nothing is launched. We don't need physical time warp. I... I think I'm just going to... No, I can't recover it either. Yeah, I really hate when that happens. Well, I guess we can try an off-plane transfer. It's not the best idea, but since I can't recover the vessel, and I can't time warp to the correct relative inclination, 
I guess we'll have to do the thing where we aren't at the right inclination on launch and uh, just try from there. Though this is a pretty severe difference. It's gotta be hard for me to plot correctly and get it to within 5,000 kilometers like this. With our spin stabilized stage and everything. Well, anyway, if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. Let's see how well we can do it. Alright. At the very least, we'll be able to get the. I mean, not. I mean, hopefully, we'll at least get within lunar SOI so we can do this one. But. Okay, here we go. Okay, booster set, and they're off. Everything's looking okay, except for, once again, we're way out of position. I mean, today has been the day of not being at the right longitude of ascending node, which is basically the situation here as well. Uh, here again, we are uh, way off on our longitude of ascending node. We should be at around zero degrees or one degrees, but instead we're at 115. So actually the exact same problem we had with the satellite launch previously with Comtub-1 is, this, is the problem that we have right now. But this time it's not my fault. Uh, it is the fact that I wasn't able to time warp to the right position. I don't know why sometimes that happens, but it does. Okay, switching to SAS. Set. Ignition. Alright, Vanguard is good. Okay, fairing set. Not entirely sure this was, was the optimal trajectory for this. I probably left it going a little bit too high planning for this five minute stage ahead of time, a little bit too far ahead of time. Okay. Set. And ignition. Okay, five more minutes to orbit. Our Delta V looks good. Okay, I'm just gonna let the stage run out. We're a little bit off. Okay, well, we're in a high orbit, but uh, I wanted to get as much juice as possible. That might not have been such a good idea. I'll review that decision after we make our transfer. Anyway, this has to remain uh, attached to this stage because this stage has the ability to turn it in the right direction. And so now it's time for me to plot for the moon and see if that's a doable thing. Okay, I think I've got a plot. Uh, it sort of relies on the possibility that we'll have communication right there. Uh, presumably we'll have it through Hawaii there, but who knows. And we do have other satellites around, so with any luck we'll have communication. But uh, we are requiring exactly how much delta V we have in the, in the separation rockets as well as the... I wonder why we're sort of spinning like this when we haven't even started to spin out. Hmm. Hope that doesn't cause any problems. But anyway, and uh, and the error be the XASR. So uh, that is, I'm presuming that I'm not going to be able to stop the engine short of it burning out. So I want a burn that will at least take up all of the delta V we've got, if not more. And I've tried to make it exactly right, and that is because and. Uh, I did that by adding a radial and normal burn that we actually don't strictly need. Uh, in other words, we really only need to burn about 2,992 or so, but I've adjusted the timing 
of the burn in order to require the real and normal burn. And so that is how I've managed that. And this sort of practice for using solid rocket boosters the way NASA does uh, in so many missions. So I'm just sort of getting used to that. And, and in that case, obviously, you can't shut down the boosters and you have to make sure they burn for exactly the right amount of time with some minor course corrections using RCS. Now, our electric charge is still an issue. Uh, the Explorer 1 probe has its electric charge locked. Uh, I don't think you can see it properly right there. But uh, yeah, it's locked. Uh, we've, we're using the tank uh, here. If I could, it's really thin. There we go. That's the electric charge we're using. And we need about an hour and five minutes left of it. Uh, I'm going to turn towards the node now to prepare because once we get to it, we don't want to be messing around. I'll have to remember to... Of course, uh, turning into it now, uh, persistent rotation might knock me off course anyway, so it might not be really the most useful thing. Oh, uh, Smart ASS is still trying to hold me. Uh, yeah, I have to remember to throttle up uh, when we do separation and a few other things. So, yep. Much to think about. Uh, also to think about is the fact that our delta V requirement seems to be going up as I turn. It's not what I wanted, really. I'm sure we have the extra 12 meters per second or so. But if I had known that just turning was going to change that requirement, I would have done something different. Okay, all the... Uh, I, I can't stop the rotation right now. Okay, and... Oh, shoot. Uh, we, we didn't want to use the hydrazine up there. Uh, that's why we were... It was because it was... It was using those thrusters that I was having the increased requirement. Okay. Well, while we have SAS, I guess I'll use it. How much hydrazine do we actually have in here? Ah, uh, 24 more. This will be alright. Tough to get exactly to the node when it's spinning around like this. Okay, well, we're getting closer. I doubt Smart ASS would do a better job. Pretty sure SAS alone can just hold it and won't do a better job. This has to be done pretty precisely. Okay, uh, let's see if Smarty SS can get us there. It's a bit too much for me to handle at this point. I can get it close, but not spot on. I don't know if Smarty SS. No, it looks like it's deviating more. This was not the part where we were supposed to have rotation. We were supposed to have rotation later. Hmm. Well, okay, I'm gonna be, yeah, oh, jeez. Persistent rotation didn't do its thing. Why does it? Current body, none. I, I don't know what the settings mean at all. I was sort of relying that I would do it on its own, but maybe I'll have to look up what the settings mean so that I'd make sure it does it properly. Okay. So this is an off-plane transfer, which means we actually overshoot the target a little bit. Part of our electric charge problem is that we're going to need nine days to get there because of that. 
Um, so yeah. Okay, let me give myself at least two minutes to figure this thing out. Okay, well, precision rotation stopped me from rotating. Presumably I can get it to the maneuver node a little bit better now. So somebody, if you have any idea about persistent rotation or why it might sometimes work and other times not work, please tell me. Or what setting I should have there. Okay, looks like we're pretty well lined up. The total burn time will be about 46 seconds. So I figure I'm just going to do 30 seconds on one side of the maneuver node and then another uh, 16 seconds on the other side. Because, uh, of course, it takes uh, the delta V that we burned on in the first half takes longer to burn than the delta V on the second half of the burn. Okay, well, that's about as accurate as I can get it. So I'll just be patient. I'm going to now unlock the electric charge here. And I have to hope that electric, uh, well, Electric charge is fine. Uh, that the communication lasts. Now, if persistent rotation isn't going to keep it rotating, okay, hold on, let me get this done. Okay, throttle up and separate. And ignition. Okay, we're off. We're right in line with it. That's good. Our drain is not very good, though. We need more than seven days. Oh, we're going off now. Okay, hold on. Uh, Z, Z, X, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, hmm. That'll actually do it. If I turn off RCS, I can't. Uh, why? Why is RCS still going? Oh, uh, SAS, I can't turn off either. Hmm. I should have turned off SAS earlier. What what is it doing? It's trying to do something. It's getting us closer to the moon right now, but I don't know why we're getting closer to the moon right now. It shouldn't actually be doing anything. But um all right. Mm, it seems to be SAS doing it, but I don't understand. Well, now we're crashing into the moon, which suits me fine, by the way. Why is our apoapsis going up? I'm going to try and time warp to see if that changes. Okay, it does stabilize, and it does stop the persistent rotation again. Okay, but anyway, we're, we're on track. Problem is, we don't have the right amount of time. Apoapsis takes six days. Our moon encounters in 8 days and 10 hours. I don't know if that will count for... Uh, let's see... Flyby... Just, it just needs to... Oh, we have to collect science. What about the impact contract? Let me see what the impactor contract requires while this is on its way. Okay, lunar impactor. Unmanned impact the moon. Complete all of the following, or complete any one of the following. Uh, altitude below ten thousand meters. Destination at the moon. Okay, so that's just crashing into a thing. Vessel destroyed. I think we could do that, right? I mean, oh, launch a new vessel. Now we have to start from scratch. I think. I think that's what that means. It seems like we're ready for this though, but it was sort of by accident, so I'm not too sure. 
Yeah, we'll hold off on that. I think we need to launch a new one and not just use the one we've got. And we've already got a moon contract. Let's see if we can... I don't know. Um, Yeah, I don't know what we can do. wonder if we could get remote tech to transmit data. Well, there's another thought. People often tell me to just turn off the battery. I don't know if that will work or if that's dangerous. Why not wait until we're really in a dire strait before doing that? Right now we don't have, even have connection. Let's get further out. Okay, now we have connection. I don't... I, I, I think I might have action grouped the uh, experiments, right? Oh no, that's the intent. I don't want to retract that. Uh, two, three, four... No, I have an action group the uh, experiment, so well. I have not. Uh, okay, so I don't think this can do that if they're not action grouped. Hmm. Well, uh, let's just see how much electric charge drain we actually have. You never know, maybe fuse box is not calculating it correctly again. But I think now our fuse box is actually doing the proper job of it, so. We don't need all four antennae, maybe. Mm, but then again, the range issue is sort of an issue. And they don't take. They say they take uh, 0, 0.00 charge per second. I suspect they still take a little bit. I mean, the Explorer One Pro also says it doesn't take any charge per second, which makes you wonder what the heck is taking up charge in that case. Well, I mean, what would the effect? While we're close, what what is the effect of deactivating one of these? Eight days. Can we get by with just two? Well, that'll do the trick. I don't know if that's enough range, though. It's not letting me time warp. Oh! Huh! Launch pad reconditioning complete is uh, an alarm that stops us. Great. Okay. Kind of a pretty tenuous communication link. Maybe the battery locking trick would have been a better bet. You can see how we're managing to hit it even though we're nowhere near the same plane as the moon. Okay, we're past apoapsis. Still one day, 22 hours until our moon encounter. Three days left of battery power according to fuse box. And I fully believe it now. And there's its warning for us. And so this will be an unintentional lunar impactor. Looks like communication is holding. Okay, there we are. There's the moon. Uh, okay, all right. So we 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 we've already done the experiments, I think. Let's see log temperature. Yeah, and it's just high over the moon. It's not biome dependent. I'm not carrying any new instruments. But let's uh, fulfill the contract to get credit. So transmit data. Santa Stay from space around the moon. And the flyby, oh, flyby has to be below 5,000. So I'm going to have to send some science at uh, below 5,000. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. We're below 5,000 now. And it's completed the contract, but maybe I can find some science we haven't done before based on the surface biome. No. No. Analyze telemetry? Nope, still high over the moon after all. But we fulfilled the contract. Maybe if we get really close we'll be low over the moon. We haven't been low over the moon before, have we? We are going to be this time. I'm 
Maze, we still actually have line of sight with Earth. Where is Earth? Uh, there it is. Okay, good. So we have line of sight as we are about to crash, and maybe we can get some close in telemetry. Now it's still high over the moon. Okay. Okay, now we must be low over the moon, right? Analyze telemetry. Alright. Just above Moon's Midlands. Transmit data. Okay, log temperature. Moon's Lowlands now. We've moved on. Okay, record impact data. Not exactly the impact data we're thinking of now that it's getting so close. There's actually other things impacting this rather than this impacting the Moon. And radiation data. Okay, Moon's Lowlands. Okay, I don't think we're gonna get uh, many more biomes. So, mission success! Mission great success! Very good, even though we weren't in the same plane on launch, we managed to do an off-plane transfer to get to the Moon. No need to lock the battery on there, it turns out that 2 and 10 i worked just fine. Good to have redundancy though. Going at 2,500 meters per second, doing something that uh, we'll have another contract to do, so looking good. Well, we'll probably upgrade this in order to do the actual lunar impactor contract. Okay, well there you have it. So, uh, success! And on that note, I think uh, it's a good idea to to call it a day. So, going back to the Space Center. And on that triumphant note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.